Miami added a veteran presence to their linebacker room. Derek Nicholson is bringing one of his guys down to the 305. KJ Cloyd, welcome to the U. You are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, if there is such a thing. I'm Alex Dono, your host, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much to the everydayers who make Locked on Canes your first listen each and every day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. So, When the bat signals came out from Dennis Smith on Sunday night, I thought it was going to be a certain class of 2024 player. So this commitment caught me on my toes a little bit, especially since this player didn't take a Miami visit. We will explain why in a moment. But the newest Miami Hurricanes transfer, and by the way, guys, likely the last transfer before the season starts because the scholarship count is... It's pretty juiced right now. It's it's pretty full. I don't know if Miami has any room for other transfers. Uh, but KJ Cloyd, six foot two, two hundred twenty nine pound linebacker who played for Derek Nicholson, who's now Miami's linebackers coach. Derek Nicholson was his linebackers coach for the past few years at Louisville. So Cloyd, he hit the portal as a grad transfer. Remember the rules are different for grad transfers on June first, so eleven days ago. 10 days before he committed. And initially, Cloyd, who's a Mississippi native, was courted by Ole Miss, and he gave them a long, hard look. You know, it's a team I'm sure he grew up paying attention to, being from that part of the country. But Miami eventually reached out to Cloyd. Uh, He talked with Cristobal on the phone. He talked a lot, I'm sure, with Coach Nicholson, who he's very familiar with. And he ended up committing to Miami without taking a visit because he trusts Coach Nick and he knows Miami's going to be a good football fit for him. So, you know, and he even said something like at this point in his career, because he had started his career at JUCO, transferred to Louisville. Now he's transferring to Miami. He didn't need all the pageantry. Like he didn't need to be wined and dined. He didn't need to put on a show for fans on social media. Like he just wanted to get down to business and find the best football fit for him. So even though he's not visited Miami, I'm sure Cloyd is not going to be too uh, not going to be too upset about the way the campus looks. And I don't know how much time he spent in South Florida, but it's not a bad place to be for those of us who spend a lot of time down here. Uh, So, Cloyd, let's talk about the role he's going to play at Miami, because no, I don't. And listen, he's going to get an opportunity to compete. Everybody will. I don't expect this guy is going to be a starter. Uh, He was primarily a backup and solid depth option at Louisville. And that's probably the role he will play here at Miami as well. And I don't want to be unfair to him because he's got an opportunity to compete. Everybody's going to be competing for starting jobs in fall camp. He will get that chance. But even if Cloyd doesn't end up taking anyone's starting spot, and obviously with how good Wes Besaint and Francisco Mauingoa have looked, the odds are probably not in his favor there. But people need to understand how important of a depth signing this is okay I love adding KJ Cloyd experienced linebacker to Miami's roster and that's this year by the way this is not 2024 this is 2023 and this is the last ride for him but the first reason why I love this addition this player is physically mature 229 pounds and as a graduate senior big body he's an excellent run stopper that's where he earns better grades he earned a 71 grade from pro football focus against the run last year And run stopping is a specific area where Miami's defense was really bad last year, especially when you had backups on the field. Depth is so important, okay? Uh, And yes, second reason why I love this addition, K.J. Cloyd played for Derek Nicholson for multiple seasons, so he already has that familiarity with Miami's linebackers coach, and he can help his teammates acclimate. I have never spoken with K.J. Cloyd in person or over the phone, but I watched some interviews of K.J. last night and this morning, and he does give off the vibe of someone who can collaborate, good leader, and I think he'll be willing to help others around him because, again, they've all got to acclimate to Derek Nicholson. And then on the field, another thing Miami's going to like about K.J. Cloyd is – 
Um, versatile enough to play inside or outside at linebacker. He started his career outside in junior college, played in the middle at Louisville, and he said he's willing to play wherever Miami needs him to. So he is versatile enough and flexible enough to play multiple roles. Special teams, I'm sure, as well could be on the menu for him. And the third reason why I like this, guys, is he's a grad transfer, a graduate senior. This does not affect the long-term scholarship numbers at linebacker, okay? So he's using a scholarship for one year. This has no impact on how many linebackers Miami can add in the class of 2024, where they've already got two in Pruitt and Shavers, and they're producing, or at least they're not producing, they're, they're recruiting at least two more. They'd like to have a big linebacker class for 2024, and those numbers will not be affected by K.J. Cloyd at all. This is a, a one-year depth signing stopgap guy. And, yeah, when you're trying to build a roster that can compete for conference championships and then, you know, one day compete for national championships, you not only need high-profile starters, but you need solid depth. And that's what I believe K.J. Cloyd should add for Miami is solid, solid depth. And this is an interesting note on the way Miami is building their linebacker unit because, guys, you remember going back a couple of years. Um, what did we always say about Miami's linebackers? Gosh, they're small. That's what we were saying like during the Manny Diaz years. Like, wow, we got we got guys with safety bodies playing linebacker. And that's one of the reasons why Miami got run over a lot, missed a lot of tackles, couldn't stop the run. This was a cool tweet by Frank Tucker at Miami Rivals. He says the six additions, linebacker additions, that Miami has made heading into the 2023 season. Francisco Mauengoa, 6'3", 230. Bobby Washington, 6'3", 220. Malik Bryant, 6'2", 225. K.J. Cloyd, 6'2", 229. Marcellus Pulliam, 6'3", 220. And Raul Popo Aguirre, 6'2", 215. So you notice a common theme there? These guys are all big and powerful, Okay. You compare that to in years past, Miami had a lot of, you know, 5'11", 190 type of linebackers. You're adding just a different kind of size. So that, that that's pretty interesting. These are going to be Miami's new linebackers heading uh, into this coming season. So, yeah, within the past two days now, Miami has added K.J. Cloyd as a graduate transfer. And in the class of 2024 recruiting, Miami added Cameron Pruitt, another linebacker. We did an episode for him uh, after he committed, so make sure you guys check that out. We did give Cameron Pruitt just yesterday a welcome to the U. And as we said on yesterday's show, we did drop a Dono ball for anybody who missed the Sunday episode. I feel confident that four-star tight end Elijah Lofton from Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas, which is a football factory, I feel confident he's going to end up picking Miami. I dropped the Dono ball for Lofton on our Sunday episode. He is, you know, hopefully he's a cane, but wherever Lofton ends up, this guy is not only going to be a weapon in the passing game, good hands, good route runner, but do not sleep on his blocking. When you watch the Elijah Lofton huddle reel and the highlight tapes, there are probably more blocks in his highlight tapes, which he wanted those in there, by the way, than there are catches, because this dude is a mean blocker who wants to drive you into the turf. He looks like he enjoys blocking in a way that a lot of high school tight end wide receiver types, because he, you know, he lines up wide sometimes. A lot of players that fit his characteristics as a pass catcher do not enjoy blocking the way this guy seems to enjoy it. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool. And hopefully Elijah Lofton ends up being a cane in the near future. But folks, we're only getting started here on Locked on Canes. I want to talk about some more of the returns and the interviews we're getting from class of 2024 prospects who just visited Miami. That June 9th weekend was arguably the most star-studded single recruiting weekend Miami has had in decades. So which of the blue chippers did Miami impress the most on those visits? We have some thoughts on Colin Simmons. When we come back, we have some thoughts on LJ McCray. Uh, we have some thoughts on Ellis Robinson, the fourth. So do not go anywhere, folks. Keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. You know I'm going to have it locked tonight to FanDuel. Make that fast break during the NBA Finals, and hopefully tonight isn't the last NBA Finals game because I want to see my Heat extend the series. But listen, it's been a tough series so far. Overall, if you've been betting the Heat and the Florida Panthers throughout the playoffs, 
you've made money because they've they've won more games than they've lost to this point. So let's let that ride going. And right now, new customers at FanDuel get a no sweat first bet up to two thousand five hundred dollars. That's twenty five hundred dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win, which means you've got nothing to lose with that first bet, because if you lose, you get it right back in bonus bets. Guys, I love how they have great promotions every day at FanDuel. It's a safe and secure app, which is so important. And yeah, you can get paid instantly. It's very easy to get paid on there. There is no better place to bet all the finals action than America's number one sports book. So if you still have some hope that the Heat and the Panthers can pull it off, my local teams, of course, you can visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. And for the everydayers, this is going to be a busy week. Malik Rozier is going to join us on Wednesday. I think we might have double episodes on Tuesday because we're going to talk recruiting with Brian Smith. We're going to talk with Bruce Warner and another legendary former Miami Hurricanes player this week. So this is going to be one of the lotus, one of the most loaded weeks, the lotus, the loadiest, one of the most loaded weeks of Locked on Canes uh, in history. We're going to keep it rolling and we're going to talk a lot of uh, recruiting for sure as well. So uh, feedback from this weekend in recruiting tells me that Miami made a stronger impression on five star edge rusher Colin Simmons from Duncanville, Texas, than I initially thought, okay? Uh, Because some of the extra intel we've been gathering and some of the interviews he's been doing uh, paint a pretty good picture for Miami. Gabby Arruti at 24-7 worded it as, Miami really made a move for Colin Simmons. And yeah, everyone I've spoken to uh, has indicated that Miami, for what it's worth, really hit this visit out of the park, as you would expect them to. Like, they didn't have anybody doing jump man poses on top of plexiglass and landing. You know, did you see that video going around in Florida where it's like, are they are they trying to injure Caleb Odom, who I love? I'd love him at Miami. They got this guy doing jump poses and landing in cleats on glass and slipping. And so that ain't cool. That's not OSHA approved. Miami visits would never do any crazy stuff like that. Uh, so Colin Simmons last night after the conclusion of his Miami visit, tweeted out, 2024 recruits be ready to flip when I announce my commitment. I want none but the best around me. Now, he's not necessarily referring to Miami, but since he did just come off a really productive Miami visit, and then he decides to tweet that, you got to feel a little bit encouraged by it. But again, if you try to read the tea leaves and, you know, You take it because recruits tweet out a lot of stuff and a lot of cryptic stuff. If you get too wrapped up in trying to figure out what all of this stuff means, you'll drive yourself crazy. You'll be in the nut house. You'll drive yourself insane. Uh, But here is from an interview what Colin Simmons told uh, Kane Sport on three after his Miami visit. He says, the plan they have for me, we call it the three year plan. It's them having that plan set up for me already before I even get in there on campus. It speaks a lot, Colin Simmons said. So right there, it tells you Miami was so prepared to give Colin Simmons his sales pitch. Simmons says he sees, quote, the best of the best being pursued on the D-line for Miami in this class. And several of those linemen were on campus with Simmons this weekend. And you know what, guys? That, That makes more sense with that tweet that he wrote because, you know, obviously I can't guarantee you in June that Miami is going to have the best defensive line class in the country. They might not, but Miami has more irons in the fire with the top defensive linemen in the country than any other school in America right now. So if Colin Simmons is sending out the message, hey, I want to commit somewhere and I want everyone to commit to this place with me because I want to be surrounded by the best, nobody has had more of those best defensive linemen on campus in this cycle than Miami. So The clues seem to be pointing in that direction, okay? But let's continue the quote. Uh, This is from uh, from Kane Sport. Other top defensive linemen on campus this weekend were five-star David Stone, five-star Dylan Stewart, four-star Aiden Breland, who's a borderline five-star, four-star LJ McRae, and three-star TJ Lindsay. Quote, 
They want us all to play together, he says, and be one of the best defensive lines to come out of Miami, Simmons said. Simmons had previously told on threes Josh Newberg and DJ Pickell, or J.D. Pickell, that he felt Texas and LSU were in the lead, but it sounds like Miami is closing the gap. He said this visit helped way a lot. Definitely put Miami up there, he said. Shoot, I didn't have any questions leaving Miami. They answered every question in my book, in my brain. They just had everything set up, and it was, quote, why not? That's what Simmons said about Miami. Why not? So uh, I think that's very encouraging and very interesting coming out of the visit of one of the very top players in the entire country, regardless of position. But he happens to be one of the top two or three edge rushers in the country. And guys, we all know who's putting in a lot of that recruiting legwork with the edge rushers. The man with the gold jacket, Jason Taylor. Jason Taylor is working his butt off to try and land the best edge class in Miami history. Now, let's stay on the defense, but let's go into the defensive backfield. Miami is definitely giving Georgia verbal commit, five-star cornerback Ellis Robinson the fourth out of IMG. They're giving him a lot to think about, okay? Um, I have no doubt in my mind that Miami right now is the top threat to Georgia in his recruitment, but I also think it's still fair to consider Georgia to be the favorites, but Miami is climbing. He said... The visit had a big impact where I go. It'll definitely have an impact on that decision. So that just means this visit, whether he sticks with Georgia or commits to Miami, this visit is going to have an impact on that decision. Uh, he was saying after his visit was Robinson, Miami's coaches really stood out to him. I know he spent a lot of quality time with Jamila Dye, the defensive backs coach, and Lance Guidry, the defensive coordinator. And just as a side note, folks, uh, something I love to see, because we talk a lot about, Miami's coaching staff this year, they've got to build chemistry. There's a lot of new coaches. A lot of the coaches that were here last year, big names, good track records. They never built any chemistry. I think that was one of the issues. I see chemistry being built now between people like Kevin Beard and Shannon Dawson on the offense and definitely Jamila Dye and Lance Guidry on the defense. Um, they have a really cool dynamic with the way they coach, like on the field. Gidry spends a lot of a lot of time with the safeties, and you know they worked out a system where he's not stepping on a die's toes. A die does you know work with the cornerbacks when Gidry's with the safeties, so they built a nice routine that's on the field. And they also seem to have a good chemistry on the recruiting trail off the field as well, uh, which you love to see. And again, like. As much as I, I love uh, DeMarcus Van Dyke, we got a question about him last week about how him leaving is going to impact recruiting. Uh, DeMarcus Van Dyke, no doubt he was a big part of defensive back recruiting, but I think people were sleeping on Jamila Dye a little bit too much. I think now we're going to see with DVD at FIU, we're going to really see, hey, um, I think we were discounting the work that Adai was doing on the trail because he's working his butt off on the recruiting trail as well. So again, like with a guy like Ellis Robinson, I don't expect him to flip to Miami, you know, tonight, tomorrow. Um, if Miami is going to flip him from Georgia, that's not going to happen overnight. The Canes are going to need to keep chipping away, and they're going to need to show him progress on the field once the season begins. Because if they're going to flip him, that's probably going to happen, you know, during the season or closer to signing day. So Miami's defense has got to show him something on the field if they're going to have any chance. All right. Uh, let's see. Another IMG Academy player that I believe Miami is closing the gap for is four-star running back Jarek Gibson, who's the second-ranked running back in the class. Texas has been the trending leader for him, and he says a lot of great things about Tashard Choice on their staff, but Miami is definitely making the decision tough for Gibson. Uh, he said after his Miami visit, this is going to be the hardest decision of his life, and I believe it to be a Miami versus Texas battle for him. Um, now, the interesting thing about Gibson is that there, there's an interesting dynamic because, again, um, Miami's definitely going to take two running backs. Would they take three? Could they take three? And would two guys with similar characteristics be willing to both commit to the same place? Um, Miami also loves four-star running back Kevin Riley, who we've talked about a lot on the show. He's out of Tuscaloosa County, Alabama. So, whether it's Kevin Riley or Jarrett Gibson, he and Gibson are both complete backs who would complement Chris Wheatley Humphrey really well. Now, Kevin Riley, who, by the way, uh, despite the fact that Miami gained some ground for Jarrett Gibson, no question, 
I still think Miami probably has at least a slightly better chance with Kevin Riley. He's going to be visiting this weekend, June 16th. So I don't really expect Miami to be able to land both Gibson and Riley. So it might be a matter of who commits first. Uh, whoever commits first, Miami takes. That, that's just my opinion. I'm not, you know, that's not any inside info from the staff or anything. It's just my opinion that it may come down to Gibson or Kevin Riley. So we'll have to see how Riley's visit goes at Miami this weekend, June 16th, which is another big official visit weekend. When we come back, we have notes on four-star defensive lineman LJ McCray. We've got notes uh, courtesy of Steve Wiltfong on Braylon Staley, the four-star wide receiver. I know his father loved that. I think Braylon did as well, but I know his father was blown away by the Miami visit because he's been tweeting about it. Um, and where Miami stands with Aiden Breland, the five-star defensive lineman. So, folks, you're going to keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. And for the everydayers, if you want to take your everydayer experience to the next level – I highly recommend signing up for our subtext SMS texting community. I noticed we have a, a few newbies on there the last couple of days because people people are addicted to this recruiting stuff. And I give you as many nuggets as I can on the subtext. So the way this works is you get you get text messages directly from my phone to your phone. You can ask me anything one on one on there. I give you guys usually about five to ten updates to the entire group per day. Things like show previews recruiting scoops, breaking news, if breaking news comes out and, you know, I answer your questions on there. And sometimes the questions you ask us on subtext get answered on the show as well. So if you want to try it free for 14 days, we include the link in the show description below. There's a link below on how to sign up for our subtext community free for 14 days. And then if you want to opt in four ninety nine dollars a month, but we try to give you a lot of extra added value on there. Um, so Miami, um, another player that Miami seemed to have really impressed on the visit, four-star defensive lineman L.J. McRae. Uh, it's definitely a Florida versus Miami battle for him. And the Gators have been considered to be the leader for quite some time for this player. He's out of Mainland High School in Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, but L.J. McRae, uh, I've been told this, and I saw Gabby noted this on 24-7. He's taking his time, Okay. LJ appears to be in no rush to make a decision. He may not recruit during the summer. He may wait till later. So this battle between Miami versus Florida could play out long into the 2023 season. Um, Steve Wiltfong, who we affectionately refer to as the Grim Reaper, because, you know, when he drops those crystal balls, if they go in someone else's direction, not yours, that's a wrap. OK, uh, but Wiltfong had a lot of notes on Miami visitors over the weekend because he spoke to a lot of them. And one of the ones that he spoke to which I didn't have a whole lot of feedback from until I read Wilt Fong's piece, was Braylon Staley. Now, Braylon Staley, I've heard feedback from his father, who tweets a lot and loved the visit, which is always great to see because you want the families to have a great time as well. Uh, so Wilt Fong writes about uh, Staley. Miami is in the middle of it for Aiken, South Carolina high, top 24-7 receiver Braylon Staley. He says Clemson, North Carolina, and Tennessee also have his interest. And folks, by the way, Clemson with the blue chip receivers they've just taken I believe them to be pretty much out of it I've been told it's a Miami versus Tennessee battle for Braylon Staley I think those are the top two for him right now uh, Staley told Wilt Fong my experience was great I love the place talking about Miami really everything I can't even pick out certain details everything really stood out to me he said now Another player that um, I, I almost consider to be a must get in this class, even though like this is not a South Florida kid. This is a Southern California kid, but he's so talented in that D line. Uh, he's I think some services have him a five star. Others have him a four star five star talent, in my opinion, is Aiden Breland out of modern day in Southern California, which is kind of like I don't know it's like the. Miami Central or the IMG Academy of Southern Cal. It's a, it's a football powerhouse. Uh, here's what Aiden Breland said to Kane Sport after his visit. Can't really place them specifically, but they're definitely in it for the long run, Breland said. It was a great visit overall. And I don't know, that quote kind of gives you the impression that he's not in a rush to announce, uh, unless that's his way of like, letting Miami down easy, which I don't think is the case because I think Miami's trending pretty well for him. It sounds like he's taking his time. Uh, he says for the Canes to win out, they have to just keep doing what they're doing, he said. Um, 
a great program, Breland said. I love Mario Cristobal and the coaches, Coach Salavea and Jason Taylor. It is a great program, just a great program, he said. Now, as far as Aiden Breland goes, there are some heavy hitters after him. He's already visited Texas A&M. He's visiting Georgia next week and or this week and then Oregon the week after that. But from everything I've been told, I believe it to be an Oregon versus Miami battle and Oregon definitely the biggest threat. Some might consider them the favorite at this point. Others might consider Miami the favorite. Uh, and there does seem to be some confidence on the Oregon side from people that I've spoken to. So I, I think for for Aiden Breland, the Oregon visit that he's making on the weekend of the 23rd is going to tell us a lot because there was one person I spoke to that thought Oregon might get a commitment from him coming out of that weekend. But who knows? I mean, if Miami just hit it out of the park with their visit, it's given him a lot to think about. OK, now on the flip side of, you know, all these great positive visits, I, I know that there's some folks on social media freaking out about a Miami verbal commit four star wide receiver Chance Robinson because he has been taking other visits. He committed to Miami back on April 14th, I think it was, the day of the spring game. So he's been a Miami commit for about two months. Uh, but this month, he's visited Penn State, and he just visited Florida. And he had some very nice things to say about Florida after his visit. Now, um, I have no doubt, and even though you know th this guy is a Miami verbal commit, but you kind of talk about him the same way you talk about Ellis Robinson as a Georgia commit, where it's like it's not over, okay? So, you know, Miami is... The leader, that's the team he's verbally committed to, but definitely sounds like Florida is gaining some ground there. Uh, you know, I did speak to uh, to a source in Gainesville earlier this morning who you know did tell me he doesn't think Miami has anything to work to really worry about from Florida here. So hopefully that's the case because chance is going to be so important for this class. And you know, I, I hope he understands just how needed he is and he's got that great connection with Kevin Beard so hopefully Beard has you know had him on the phone and, and KB is keeping this young man engaged because he's he's an incredible young man and an incredible football player and you know he did grow up a Miami fan so you know I hope that the situation is right for him where he can you know live his dream because I'm guessing he probably grew up dreaming about wearing orange and green same way that I did I don't have the talent Chance Robinson did of course so things could work out a little bit differently for him but you know I, I, I was told this morning that maybe there's not so much to worry about there but he is saying a lot of nice things coming out of Florida so it's just a reminder folks let this be a reminder recruiting does not finish when you land a verbal commitment especially when it's from a four or a five star because the four and five stars, they're going to continue to get courted. They're going to continue to get called. They're going to be wined and dined by other programs that, you know, it's not over till it's over. All right. And listen, let's also remember in the last cycle, Florida thought they were flipping everybody on Miami's commitment list. Like they thought, oh, yeah, we're, we're taking Francis Maui Goa. No problem. We're taking Malik Bryant. We're taking Tommy Kinsler back. Um, you know, they, they did take Jaden Rashada, but then they lost him. <laughs> I don't know. So, you know, Florida, don't, don't listen to the Gator fans too much because they, they always think they're taking all of Miami's players. So it is what it is. Uh, hopefully Chance Robinson stays solid to the U. All right, folks, huge thank you and shout out for everybody who took the time to tune in. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. Hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We're closing in on 10,000 subscribers. We're so close. We want to get there by the time the season starts, if not before. And if you're listening to the audio version, make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, the Odyssey app, wherever you get your pods. And if you can take a little time to leave us a five-star review, we like to shout those out on the show when they come in. So we will talk to you next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.